VGK wraps up its five-game road trip in Philadelphia tonight, hoping to make this an eight-point road trip. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone, along with Chris Garlic, I'm Tony Cardasco. Welcome to Lockdown Golden Knights, and thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You can find us on Twitter at Lockdown VGK, at Tony Dasco, at TD Chris G, and make sure that you check out the YouTube channel and subscribe, Lockdown Golden Knights. So, Chris, VGK plays the Fading Flyers tonight. Philadelphia, a team that appears to be a tailor-made opponent for the Vegas Golden Knights. Philadelphia has now lost three straight and seven out of the last eight. A team, Chris, that just cannot score. They can't score goals. Uh, three, 10, and two in their last 15. And uh, the Flyers haven't scored three or more goals in 12 of their last 15 games. I'm telling you to bet the under as well. All you can say is that Philadelphia does they still play a part, right, uh, under John Tortorella. For the Golden Knights, the key, again, is to get out to that fast start, and they cannot overlook this opponent tonight. You always say bet the over when Jonathan Quick plays. Now what are you saying? So maybe maybe the action is uh, you, you go with the goals, uh, the team goal totals. You take over three and a half for the VGK and under two and a half for Philly. Maybe that's that, that's the under play two tonight. and a half would be, I think, money. I think that would be money tonight. Yeah, that yeah. could be an interesting play. I'll have to take a look at that. I'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at Philly here, there's not much to you know get excited about as far as uh, what they've done recently. They beat Detroit on Sunday, the fifth, three to one, but then three losses: Tampa, Carolina, Pittsburgh. They lost to the Rangers. I mean, gosh, they got one, two. They have three victories going back to post-All-Star break. Yeah. So that just tells you a lot right there. But what it doesn't tell you in the stats is they're still going to play it tough. They're still going to muddy up the neutral zone. Um, we'll see what version of Philly that we have. Vegas struggled mightily against Philly uh, going back a few uh, Saturdays ago, sometime in November, I want to say, at T-Mobile Arena. Carter Hart had an amazing game though too. You have to. I'm. I mean, me and my son were at that game, and Carter Hart just had a remarkable game. Uh, that was the OT winner by Jonathan Marchesso, and the game where uh, Shea Theater ultimately uh, left the game injured. So, hopefully, uh, this is also a much uh, different and much better and healthier Vegas Golden Knights team. I say that as we're down to our fourth and fifth string goaltenders, but and and no captain, but we're still a healthier, better team than we were back in November. So. Got to go and take care of business. And we did say, Tony, uh, I think both of us, uh, six points on this road trip would have been a very good road trip. Yeah. Uh, my qualifier was get at least one victory against Tampa or Carolina. And they beat Tampa and Carolina. And then they came back and handled the Blues in, in a back-to-back scenario, too. So, you know, I mean, let's get the two points tonight. If they get one point and something dumb happens in overtime or the shootout, so be it. Yeah, it's still pretty good. It's uh, still a very successful road trip, but they need to stay focused, pay attention to all those details. Again, uh, checking in the neutral zone, I think, will be a big key. And the Philadelphia Flyers, they've been without Cam Atkinson, Sean Couturier, injuries to them. Uh, yesterday, Travis uh, Kokechny was back on the ice, so he's been hurt. Um, so they've had a variety of injuries, but again, just not a very good team. And, of course, because they've struggled, they had to have uh, a change in the front office. Uh, the new interim interim GM is Danny Breer, and he replaced uh, Chuck Fletcher back on Friday. And he said that this will not be a quick fix. It's going to take some time for them to get things together in Philadelphia, which is kind of sad for the fans there because I think it's a great and storied franchise, and they deserve to have at least a competitor. Yeah, and, you know, you wonder about the – um the hire of uh, Tortorella in the off season, right? Tortorella is not a rebuild type of guy. He's uh, going to take a team that's, you know, already established and, you know, hopefully get him going. And, you know, it's weird. I mean, how often are coaches, this is, you know, maybe just a more of a blanket uh, question here, 
do coaches go through the rebuild and, and then they're the coach that gets a chance to take the team to the Stanley cup victory or the NBA finals or the world series. Like that's, you know, you almost wonder um, what John Tortorella's long-term you know, scenario is given the fact that uh, Briere is basically coming out and saying, Hey guys, uh, you know, just work with us. It's going to be a little while here. Philadelphia. I don't know much about the fans there. You know, people talk a lot, but I'm guessing patience doesn't sit well with fans from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not at all. And I follow a number of uh, Philadelphia Flyer fans on Twitter, too. And, yeah, they're just not happy with this uh, rebuild in Philadelphia, known for the process. I mean, they're just not up for the process again with another professional sports franchise. I feel that VGK is a team that just might be a little bit banged up after that very physical game, especially when St. Louis trail three to one. I have to go back to that. And Craig Berube said, let the dogs out. And that's what they did. They started yep. just smashing uh, VGK. So, I mean, they had a day off. So let's see how they respond tonight. But will someone like a Tony D'Angelo back off of the two game suspension <laughs> for spearing the Lightning's Corey Perry? Will he be someone now? who just starts to get out there and starts jamming everyone tonight. Spearing, that's a tough thing. And, you know, I really never want to um, say I want someone to get speared, but <laughs> Spear Corey, Perry, Corey Perry might be that guy. I'm not going to lie. He <laughs> might yeah, just sure. be that guy. Um, I mean, yeah, D'Angelo, he's going to be, you know, tough and in your face as will the rest of the team. And, you know, this is that spot now where the VGK is going to get some teams down the stretch who are playing for pride. They're playing for paychecks. They're playing for visibility for next season. And Philly does meet that mold right now. And those teams can be just as tough to play against sometimes because, I mean, they got nothing to lose right now. They're playing loose. You know, I mean, I guess Philly's got something to lose because Tortorella will just freaking undress them in the locker room and tear them apart if things don't go well, if, you know, unfortunate for the Philadelphia Flyers. But so Vegas does have to check all the boxes in this one. And they have to check, I guess, more pun intended, no pun intended there. No Keegan Colasar in a game like this, that's noticeable. Keegan Colasar, like I said, he doesn't he doesn't get the crowd on their feet with their checks. He doesn't, you know, he's not that flashy of a physical player. But when he's not there, you really, really notice it. And you felt that in the Blues game. And now you're going against a team who is two or three, four times even more physical than the St. Louis Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers. So Vegas is going to have to be ready for this one. They're going to have to get out of this one healthy. And, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, someone like Dorofiev is up to the challenge again, back to back, or, um, you know, who's ready to step up and uh, help make this an amazing eight point road trip, hopefully. Why do you feel, Pavel Dorofiev, you just mentioned him, why do you feel that he is already fitting in on that second line? One game. I mean, I, I feel he did, a, he had a really good game. And, you know, Dorofiev, it's, this is his, that was his fourth NHL game, if I'm not mistaken, fourth, right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And I felt last season at times he was someone noticeable. Okay, so there was a game where Dorothy have dressed last year, and VGK was only playing with 17 skaters, uh, one less forward, from what I recall. And Dorothy was getting some shifts with Jack Eichel. And you felt like he, um, you know, was able to kind of click with a player of that nature. Um, Dorfiev can score goals and he can score really good goals too. He scored some amazing highlight reel, uh, power play, excuse me, um, uh, shootouts goals. So he knows what to do around the nets. And the biggest step that I noticed in his game year over year is his physicality. It doesn't necessarily seem like a big body. And, you know, when you're standing next to him up in the press box, I don't even think he's a hockey player, honestly. Well, you know, let me just stop you there. Yeah. When you're playing next to Patrice Bergeron, like oh, you can't go. go, you can't yes. go south. Yes. Yes. Walked into that one. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. And hey, listen, that line was clicking, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, and Carlson, I'll punt. No, you know, he did have some good scoring chances. He almost got a little razzle dazzle goal in that game. Yeah. Nice little 360 where uh, he actually intended to do it. Tony, it wasn't like an accident. He wasn't falling or slipping. He didn't get checked and find a way to hold the puck. He actually had a nice uh, attempt out of it. So Dorofiev does have a future. I did mention this in uh, yesterday's show. Gary Lawless was very high on him uh, in the off season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, this is another player that, the VGK scouted, they looked at, and 
Now here he is contributing in important games down the stretch, whether he only gets to do one or two more games, whether he gets to play out the entire string right now, who the heck knows what's going to happen with uh, all these strange injury situations that keep coming. Nicholas Waugh, Milk Carton. Where's Nicholas Waugh? Have you seen him? You know, Keegan Collis are hopefully uh, whatever he came back to get looked at. Hopefully that's going to get better. And, you know, we'll see uh, how healthy the team can remain down the stretch because that's still like walk on eggshells right now, right? With all the injuries we've been having. So uh, did Philadelphia, did they acquire, I said Philadelphia Inquirer, that's the newspaper. Did they acquire anyone at the trade deadline? Um, Of course, they are still now shopping James Van Riemdyk uh, because, Riemsdyk, I should say, because they had the trade negated, remember? Uh, He was going to Detroit, right? And then Detroit said, they nixed the deal, I think, at the last moment. It, we even thought that that trade had gone through, but um, I don't believe that they picked up anyone. And uh, Torch is saying that his team is right there. He believes that they are right there, that they're playing hard, uh, said that they have to beat teams with their forecheck and with their toughness. So this is going to be a tight checking game tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is where – curious to see what adjustments get made because, of course, they're going to look at tape from the last game. And – However, these meetings go amongst the coaches, uh, they're going to be like, oh, wow, there's no room in this game, no room to move whatsoever. I mean, the, uh, the ice literally only opened up in that game once the third period or excuse me, once overtime was going and then Marshall got the breakaway and ended it. So curious to see what adjustments uh, the VGK have. VGK is healthier overall. We know this as well, plus uh, the reinforcements they've picked up uh, in Bluger and Barbashev. So this is a better defensive team. And uh, obviously, Bluger has also even uh, started to contribute on the offensive side. Uh, he's notched a few assists, too. So, you know, on paper, VGK needs to go in there and make this a nice, you know, quick four to one affair. Will that uh, end up happening? I don't know. Um, you know, and the fact that um, that Tortorella is giving words of encouragement, that's, you know, to a team struggling, that's, um, you know, that that's a new that's that's a new version of John Tortorella. Right. And the fact that he's well, saying those things that does. He is a good coach. He is a good coach. Oh, I didn't say that. Sometimes too transparent, especially with the media, where he knocks them down. We've watched a lot of pressers, but (laughs) he definitely lets you know what's up, and that's uh, for sure. And I think this could become a very fun game tonight. Now, coming up next, uh, we're going to took a we'll take a look at the Western Conference teams that uh, perhaps the fans would like to see VGK play in the playoffs. We'll talk about that. We return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Right now, the NBA season is here. And, of course, it's in full bloom as we head towards the playoffs. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. And that is bonus bets back if your team does not win. If your bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You also need it now for March Madness. Then you could bet on everything from money line bets in the NBA to point scores to three pointers drained. And of course, there's a lot of player props for player points, rebounds, assists. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout in the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, that's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. Welcome back to LockedOn Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Find us on our YouTube channel, LockedOn Golden Knights. Chris, yesterday I referred to myself as the other guy. And someone said, yeah, someone said the other guy needs to stop making uh, picks where he selects selects VGK. We'll get into our predictions here in a moment. Uh, But okay, so you wanted to bring up the topic. uh, Pick a team that VGK would beat in the playoffs, could beat in the playoffs. If that's a better way to phrase it, is that what we're looking at? Yeah, I mean, I would say just kind of discuss two teams that we feel VGK will match up well against in the first round and two teams maybe we don't want to see. Well, okay, I'm just going to start off with right now the positioning for VGK. They would play 
if the season were end ending right now, wild card two, Colorado. One of Winni- the- Winnipeg as of this second. That changed. That just changed. It's it actually changed. Winnipeg as of, as of this moment. Oh. Colorado right now say- is division three. Oh. So it literally just changed last so, night. Because they won last yeah. night in big fashion. They're starting to really come on. So I would not want to play Colorado. And I would not, because of all the drama, want to play Minnesota. Let's start off with teams that you don't want to play. Yeah, no, I'm with you on on Minnesota, the concerning factor. And my perspective is you look at the goaltenders first and teams that have goalies that are able to, you know, dominate a series. Obviously, you have Marc-Andre Fleury and the drama and the popcorn that would um, associate that associate with that certainly could be a concern. Colorado is still a Stanley Cup champion until proven otherwise. And I don't care where they finish in the top eight. There are just as they're likely to man. make a deep run no matter where they finish. And if they struggle through the regular season, you know, the Stanley Cup hangover, they are going to turn it on once the playoffs happen. I'm not saying they're unbeatable or unstoppable by any means, but they are going to be very close to the Stanley Cup version avalanche, uh, less a couple, you know, players like Nazim Kadri and stuff. The teams that would kind of concern me to go up against in the first round, and this isn't going to happen in the first round, obviously, but a team that I definitely don't want to face if we can avoid them is obviously the Dallas Stars, of course. Um, Dallas, you know, wouldn't. I mean, again, we're not going to get them in the first round, but that would certainly be a tough opponent, obviously. Um, As far as first-round opponents, Winnipeg could be a slight concern as well. I know they're fading. I know they're not playing well, but that is probably – the best home ice advantage in the playoffs. And VGK matched up very well against them. Obviously, in our first year, we lost uh, the first game against them in the conference finals. Uh, and we carried uh, the Campbell Bowl off uh, off of the Winnipeg Jets home ice on game five. So we matched up well against them. But Connor Hellebuck, you know, Connor Hellebuck is that goaltender capable of taking over an entire series. So, you know, if we can avoid Winnipeg, I would not be against that. Uh, we're not going to face Dallas. And I'll agree with you on Minnesota. Minnesota could drop to a spot where we could end up seeing them in the first round. And mm. that, that'd be a heavy, that'd be a heavy. I want to watch that. Yeah. Be heavy. That'd, that'd be heavy. I don't think I'd want to see that. And that's a, that's one of those series too, that could set the tone for the remainder of the playoffs. If uh, VGK were to survive right against uh, a Minnesota team, because again, a lot of emotions I think would be running. And then uh, also they play a very tough game and physical game. And uh, Revo had his first Gordie Howe hat trick a couple of nights ago. Oh, he didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't. He did, but he didn't. He got on the okay. score sheet. He did that fight. Did you actually see the fight? A little bit, yeah. There was nothing. It, it was uh, so <laughs> Revo has that style of basically just waiting and staring Smashing. down and whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. And then the person, whoever he jumped, whoever you fought him, threw a couple right. punches. Revo backs up, and the refs break it up right away. But they took forever to start dancing. That's why. So on paper, yeah, he got the Gordy Howe hat trick, but it wasn't necessarily. Uh, I mean, I've seen people get roughing penalties for more than what happened in that fight. OK, one of the teams that I feel I'm going to go, obviously, op- op- opposite of what you're going to say here. But I want to go with uh, the Winnipeg Jets as a team that I think VGK should meet in the playoffs, especially early on. Uh, but they are now playing some pretty hot hockey. Uh, They beat Florida. They beat Tampa Bay. Might be something wrong with those teams, you know? Seriously. I'm not diminishing anything about the victories on the road for VGK, but who knows? I mean, and Vasilevsky definitely is not himself. Not himself at all. Tampa's, they got a lot of wear and tear. They got so much wear and tear right now. put bodies in front of him now, teams are starting to figure it out, and they're not uh, able to really stop players in the in the blue paint area. So they're still going to be Toronto in the first round. uh, Probably. Right. Uh, So VGK, I think has the number of uh, the Winnipeg jets. They beat them three times early in the season, early on, I think before December. Yes. It's the six to five game, the five to two game, the two to one game. And the key there was that they controlled every game. So hella buck. Yes. He's great. Except when he plays against, the Vegas Golden Knights. So now, um, and also remember, I do remember too, Rick Bonus wasn't healthy. He had COVID early on. I, would, I think maybe he came back for the third game that they played. But in any event, 
Uh, this is a team that I think VGK could handle. This is a team that they could handle if they play in the first round. Uh, oh, no Mark doubt. Shifley, by the way, 60 points. He just reached 60 points for Winnipeg on this road swing. Yeah, I mean, Winnipeg, I get both sides of the argument. I 100% do. And, you know, if they're a team that limps into the playoffs, they could be primed for, you know, a quick uh, 4-1 exit. And hopefully that would be at the hand of the Golden Knights, obviously. Just kind of hell about just he's such a good goalie. He's such a good goalie. And the guy you root for as well when you watch his personal interviews and things like that. So, you know, and I mean, the Winnipeg Jets series, that was so much fun. Uh, all the Jets fans at T-Mobile Arena during the playoffs in season one. So I, I would like to see that happen again. I think it'd be a ton of fun. And I, I do get both sides. I do get that we should be able to handle a team like that. And my concern is just, you know, the goaltending situation and the home ice advantage that they do have in the playoffs. Although we, you know, we, we also handle that in, in season one, too. I think if Jonathan Quick, okay, so he started all seven games last year in that series against Edmonton. And now we understand somewhat the method and the madness behind Bruce Cassidy when it comes to goalies. And if he gets out to a one nothing lead, they might just ride him an entire series. I, w- I would not be surprised if they if they played Jonathan Quick every every game. The amazing Jonathan, I might add. Yeah, I mean, no back to backs in the traditional playoffs, so that's that that's noteworthy right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Are there any other teams that you think uh, VGK could beat in the first round? I mean, I, I, early on. Oh, we're going the other way now. So as far as teams that well, I, say I Winnipeg, would, I, think I would really Winnipeg. love to see them play. Uh, first of all, uh, the Kings, right? I'm going to use our favorite word here in Las Vegas. Uh, sustainability. Oh, sustainability. I that one in a while. Jeez. So the Kings are still they're They're a plus seven now. So they are playing better hockey as far as our favorite differential shows. Our favorite word was trap or trap game. There's all we got. We got a lot of favorite words. So we can't say even and some people call us too, I'm sure. But so the Kings are playing better hockey on the defensive front. They've improved their overall plus minus to plus seven. But <clears throat> still that type of that type of close goal differential doesn't tell me that they're playing great defense in tight games. That simply just says they're in the games are winning their And you look at the goalie stats, right? You look at what Jonathan quick did with them. You look at Phoenix friggin' Copley, who was still yeah, he has over in, 20. He has over 20 wins, but I don't, uh, to your point though, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to fare in a playoff series. I'm not quite sure there or Corpus Allo, Like, like, what are we even, now what are we even Corpus doing Allo. here? You know, it's right. just, I want to look at Copley stats really fast here, but I say sustainability because the goal differential, their goaltending situation. I don't think, I mean, I think they drop, they're still going to drop off in these last 15 games. I know they have yet to do so. And that's a credit to them, you know, frame. So, okay. Copley just got a save percentage over uh, 900. He's nine, nine, zero two save percentage goals against still two, six, nine. Those stats were not far from what Jonathan quick was doing there. So mm-hmm. I don't think their defense, their goaltending situation, any of that is going to be sustainable for, a long playoff series. And the other team I would love to see, I know it's a little contradictory because our, our stats against our overall win, um, our win loss against the Pacific, isn't that good, but give me Seattle in the first round. Give me some Martin Jones, Tony, give me some Martin. Oh Jones. yeah. Martin Jones. We know that bubble's going to burst. And I think this is a team right now that is starting to go backwards. I don't think they have the depth uh, that a lot of other teams have. Is my head kind of big today? Cause I'm going on TMZ today again. My head look big. Head's big every day. Okay. When we return, speaking about big heads, uh, we'll have our (laughs) locks of the night, and we'll also have our predictions for today's game. And, uh, again, it's quick in that tonight, not the other guy. We'll return with more after this on Locked On Golden Knights. Our next partner has a product that we use every day. Athletic Greens is great to take because neither myself nor Chris Golick have time in the morning Especially, we were going back and forth yesterday about who works more. I think we were having a little bit of a conversation about that on Twitter. (laughs) But now it's been several months, and uh, it's really a great product. Um, It's very much a very healthy uh, product, and it has a mild tropical taste that you look forward to taking each and every day. There are 75 high-quality vitamins uh, within AG1 and also 
Uh, there's a lifestyle friendly brand that you need to try. And it's something that really helps you out and gets you started on the right foot each and every day. We always talk about the importance of the multivitamin on this show because people take some sort of multivitamin every day. But it's important to choose one that has high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with some really big benefits. And it costs less than $3 a day. You need to try it out. There's a lot of testimonials that you could find all over uh, the internet. And for every purchase, they also donate to organizations that help to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back to Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick. We come to you Monday through Friday right here or wherever you get your podcast. Check out the YouTube channel locked on golden knights and we appreciate all of your uh, conversation and notes and everything you have to say on our twitter feed at locked on vgk and follow my man uh, td chris g so it's that time locks of the night and predictions and this will be the final game in philadelphia tonight chris before vgk plays 12 straight against the pacific division do you have any concerns there because bruce cassidy especially early on could not figure out opponents in the Honda Pacific division. <laughs> it's it's very fair based on the stats, but let's see what happens now that we have a different VGK team. Uh, we have come. This team has developed an identity, and it happened literally at the trade whoa, 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 deadline. Newsflash: What what is this identity? Defense, now stout defense, of? stout defense. We are a stout defensive team that has become extremely opportunistic. And that's something we talked about how many times, uh, you know, in, in by November, you should be able to have the, the foundation for the formula of the team, right? You know, when teams are coming to play the golden Knights, okay, Philly tough in your face, tough checking, um, you know, Tampa, Carolina, highly skilled Tampa moves the puck as well as anyone in the NHL. And we can go on and on, but I felt for a long time, VGK did not have an identity. And now, since we got Bluger, since we got Barbashev, and even Jonathan Quick has, you know, contributed to this a little bit now. There is a defensive identity to this team. They are tough to play against, and they're finding ways to uh, turn it up on the other side. Okay, so my <coughs> predictions for locks of the night, I'm going to go with the guy they call Booger, <laughs> and I'm going to go with Petro. Is that really his nickname, Bugger? Or, or is I'm trying to think what Cassidy, they used for the is Cassidy just mispronouncing his name? At least he took a shot with the name. Give him credit. He took a shot. And he didn't call him the other guy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with three to one VGK. Uh, they earlier had that two to one win here in Las Vegas at home in December, and I just go back to was it last season where VGK lost coming off of the Phoenix game. Uh, where they lost four to nothing here at home. Larry Brossois, was that a season ago already? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been. That's yeah, they, trying to forget pain stuff like that, but yeah. They're pesky and they're going to be tough. And again, three goals for Philadelphia in three games. VGK winning three to one tonight. The fans aren't going to like that. Our followers are not <laughs> are not going to like that. I'm predicting that. VGK comes up with a win, but it won't be easy. Maybe it'll be an empty net goal by the booger guy yes. or something late in the game. And VGK, I still feel, is still smarting. I think they're still sore from that game a couple of days ago on Sunday. I mean, it's been a tough – it's been a good road trip as far as results go, but it's been a tough road trip. I mean, you start with a fight night in Tampa, right? And then that takes a toll, you know. And I, we did mention – I mean, here we go. So – the concern was, did we make it out of that game completely healthy? And Colasar was certainly uh, in the middle of a lot of the stuff happening. Uh, he plays Carolina, and then he goes back home after that. So 
that may it might have been some collateral damage, you know, going back to the Tampa game and it, the Florida game. I mean, that was a tough game as well. Carolina, yes, the team did well, but it's still a tough team to play against. That's going to you know be physical. And the St. Louis game was very physical. So hopefully BGK has something left in the tank for this game. And this is, you know, the next trap game. But I, I do think uh, Vegas is going to roll tonight. We're going to we're going to agree that Vegas is going to win. I got four one. I think they find ways to score. And uh, Phil Kessel has been quiet again. Phil Kessel has been quiet, not terribly noticeable. So hopefully his return to locks of the night will reinvigorate him. So I'm going to Kessel and uh, you know, I know you're going to make a face in a second, but I'm going William Carlson. Uh, Carlson's been scoring. He's been, you know, noticeable to a degree right now. There you go. He's been noticeable. He's been uh, just doing a good job running that second line. I think, uh, Right now, that line, do they bring, is it Brendan Stevenson up there a little bit with them? Or are they moving him around a little bit? So, you know, we'll see uh, We'll see how that works out. So give me Kessel, give me Carlson, give me uh, four to one VGK. And now if, if Vegas wins tonight, Tony, we're going to lose half our followers. Just I'm, I'm booking that right now. So I should have gone against VGK. I can't with this uh, sick team. They've scored three goals in three games. I mean, watch them have a six goal game because they said to bet the over every time the quick is in net. And so far, it's been pretty good. And even without him in net, the games are going over. So that's the residual effect I think that Jonathan Quick has with this team. I got an early WTF. I don't know if it's going to be happening tonight or not, but uh, they've been advertising his new goaltending kit. Uh, he has new oh, pads. please stop it. He's got a new helmet and everything and all that, this. That helmet was everywhere yesterday. So yeah, and it's, it but my point being and... is, Come why on. change it, dude? Just keep the Kings, keep all the gear the way it is. Don't change anything. If he goes out there and lays an egg tonight or Thursday, whenever he debuts the gear, I'm guessing he'll probably wait till Thursday to debut it. But, you know, whatever day he debuts all his new gear, and if he lays an egg out there, don't change it. Why change it? I mean, look how well Logan Thompson did last year with the silver pads. Everyone hated those silver, those oh, silver I hated pillows, those. but he did just fine with them. Yeah, he sure did. And so those two guys are skating again, Logan Thompson and Laurent Brossois. And see, we can see one of them back. They've been, a, yeah, they'll be a practice when they return because they still have a few days, right, before uh, they return here, a couple of days away here in Las Vegas. Um, so that'll wrap up today's show. And we thank everyone for making Lockdown Golden Knights your first listen. Now make your second listen, game to game NHL. Is that what you're on? Is that you're on? Yeah, the- no, they, they, so whenever I, whenever they actually put it on, another story for another time. Um, but after the games, I do the recap video and then, they put that in like a sports center esque uh, type uh, quick hitter, so people can get a quick uh, go quick, Jonathan quick. They can get a nice Jonathan quick uh, game to game run of what happened. Quickie, yeah. there you go. I like that. I like that. Of course, game to game NHL has every moment, every top performance, every result, except for Chris's reports. Sometimes locked on game to game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis, especially from Chris. Sometimes that only locked on can. Delivery. I've had my kids in the last two, actually, so they're entertaining. They're fun. I think I wore, I wore the taco hat in the last one. <laughs> Where is the taco hat? Is it still nearby? It is sitting on. So, OK, you see the flamingo back there. OK, hold on. Everything's backwards. OK, hold on. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, boy. Oh, this is the tough okay. part. So you can see right there. There's the flamingo. Okay. There's a the blue flamingo Austin now. Matthews autographed hockey helmet there. And gotcha. actually, Austin Matthews is wearing the taco helmet right now. I got it. We found I'm covering it. an Austin Matthews we autograph right now, right just there. so you know. <laughs> and then tomorrow we'll take it off and say what's different about this picture. Uh, again, tomorrow Ooh, recap. Fun. The, yeah, fun <laughs> we could do that. What's different about my backdrop? Uh, again, tomorrow we will recap tonight's game. The fourth man, leave is hanging over. From a man, Chris Golick. I'm the big-headed guy who will be on TMZ today. We appreciate everyone tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow right here. Unlocked on Golden Knights. Take